Bonjour, bonsoir, madame Messier. Bienvenue à un programme de jazz musique. La musique de France. Grande composition de France musique. Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, I will speak as much in a French way that I can to give a little more authenticity to the program. And what is interesting as the program goes on, you will see of all the countries in the world and European countries, France produced their own standards outside America the most. America, you can't beat Gershwin, Ellington, Porter, all the great tunes. France, uh, Germany had Lily Marlene, nice tune. You can play also Kurt Weil before he moved to America. Mac the Knife, uh, Mac the Messer. But France, you will see so many standards. And one of the big ones was Michel Legrand. So speaking of French, a um, lot of memories. When I played with John Hendricks in Buffalo, New York, all of a sudden one night, he gets the idea, introduce me in French. And he told me what to say. The club was called Royal Arms. And he told me this, so I said, Bonsoir, Madame Messier. La Arme Royale présentait les premiers chanteuses de jazz musique, Monsieur Jean Hendrix. Royal Arms presents the number one singer in jazz, Mr. John Hendrix. And John has done so many travels. He became a lawyer. He was one of the sharpest cats I knew. He knew history, everything. So. He lived in Europe and he had a, because he was a great jazz singer, he had an ear for languages. So that, that was kind of fun. Now, let me see. The last selection I need to tell you in French, uh, the title is in French, let me check it out. Solucier du Paris under Paris skies, written by Hubert Giraud. And it lends itself to jazz improvisation. John Coltrane recorded it first with a uh, tuba player. I think of his name later. Um, and they did a nice job. And then I recorded on the album with John Hendricks. It was a reunion of several of us. We did it after many years, so I did a solo version. Now, move on to another French composition, part of France standards, La Vienne and Rose, Edith Piaf, and very hip tune recorded by many great jazz musicians, Louis Armstrong, Coleman Hawkins, La Vienne et Rosa. Thank you. 
Merci, Madame Messier. I hope you enjoy that classic tune that has been around since mid 40s and vocalists and horn players, very melodic. Uh, it's been recorded in America by Toots Thielmans, also one of the great singers, happens to be from Bay Area. I wish she recorded, but we did it in concerts when she sings it. Jackie Ryan has a great ear for languages, singing authentically in Spanish, of course, her mother's tongue. In French, when she sings this in French, boy, moves the audience, and she sings in Italian, so Jackie does a great job of, of this tune. And um, let me see. I have many interesting things to tell you about France being like American music, jazz, the first elements were brought to France during World War I. And black gentlemen from Harlem, known as Harlem Hellfighters, they were volunteers. They wanted to help their country. So they volunteered and American army wouldn't have them. General Pershing said no. However, French military welcomed them. And what is sad, Pershing told them, don't praise them too much. They won so many medals, it was really something. And the band leader, who was already known in New York, was James Reese Europe phenomenal band leader, knew how to conduct an orchestra of brass and reeds, and I'll tell you more about him in a minute. So that was World War I France, and that band brought in the first time in France the elements of ragtime, blue notes, and some gospel. And Debussy was already starting to get influenced by American music with a little ragtime inflections. Maurice Ravel, one of the great composers, another French composer, was high on jazz. I'll tell you about him later. And then go back to France, to the standards. The gentleman that wrote so many phenomenal tunes is Michel Legon. I will play now from Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Watch what happens.
Some of you have seen the French film about 64, I think, Umbrellas of Cherbourg, where there is no speaking, everything is sung. Great selections. Uh, I will wait for you. I'm trying to remember some more names. Michel Legrand was one of the top melodic modern composers, but beautiful melodies that stay with your ear, and harmonies too, very refreshing. And he made a mark in 58 on the world of jazz, 19, yeah, it was 58. The album, you have to, you have to get it, listen to it at least. Le Grand Jazz, New York, Miles was featured, Bill Evans, Coltrane, Phil Woods, and listen to uh, one of those tunes. Oh yeah, famous Fast Waller Jazz Waltz, Jitterbug Waltz. Listen to his arrangement of that. I mean, it's it's a high art level. Really something. Watch. Uh, well, what happens when I played, but on the Le Grand Jazz, the waltz, beautiful, jitterbug waltz. Now, what will happen, let me see, I guess we can go to Django Reinhardt. Here is another great, he was actually born in Belgium, but his home was France ever since, and the songs that he wrote were phenomenal. One of his famous tunes was Nuage, meaning clouds.
Most of you uh, are familiar, I imagine, with Django. What happened when he was still young, his gypsy caravan caught fire. And his right hand, the solo hand, was burned and he could only use three three fingers, only three fingers. However, it didn't make any difference when you listen to him play, it sounds like he had 10, how much music, it wasn't just a number of notes, but the feeling behind him. Arteta played a lot of notes, but there was a feeling in everything he played. And phenomenal delivery what Django did. Well. Another great pianist who was handicapped was Horace Parlin. He played less notes, but everything he played was in perfect time, beautiful harmony. So it's just a matter of uh, musicality. And Django, Django was something. Great groove and um, he made a mark in the history at the same time, he was so versatile. When bebop came, mid 40s, he made a natural switch to the electric guitar and phrasing in bebop. He was just a great musician. Unfortunately, he died young at the age of uh, 43. A great musician. Well, next we go to an interesting uh, selection. Sonny Rollins in 1956. I would say a hit album with Sonny in the late, mid 50s, late 50s had a beautiful tone, swinging, phrasing, inventiveness. And this tune is Sonny called it Tenor Madness, and it's the only tune that featured him and John Coltrane together. They do duet, exciting. However, Sonny didn't write that tune, Tenor Madness, 10 years before Kenny Clark who spent time after the war, then he moved to France. He recorded it in 1946 with the 52nd Street Boys. He called it Rue Chaptal, a street in Paris. And after the tune, I'll tell you, I was there and reminded me of this, Rue Chaptal. And you, you might have heard it as Terror Madness. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
as I mentioned, the real name of this first original name was Rue Chaptal Street in Paris. And what was interesting in my case, when I was fortunate to meet and perform with the wonderful Serbian Montenegrin bebop trumpet player Dusko Gojković, who passed away in the recent few weeks, Dusko played with Kenny Clark in the 50s. He left the communist Yugoslavia and he played throughout Germany. Germany had many, which was different than here, the culture. All the big cities had a big band, Radio Berlin, Hamburg, and steady work. So when I worked with Dusko in Germany in the late 60s, early 70s, he said, Kenny Clark wrote a tune, Tenor Madness, and he, he told me the name, Rush Aptal. So what happened in one of the trips in Europe, a few years ago, my wife Sana and son Alexi, before going to Basel, Switzerland, to play with Kim Nally on the festival Jazz on the Rhine River, stopped in Paris, spent a few days, relaxed, beautiful city. So we are looking for a piano studio. We look in a book and there is one and it happens to be on Rue Chaptal. So we go there, I see Rue Chaptal, ah, the memory come, and there's a courtyard, the piano studio had some Czechoslovakian pianos, so when we finished, there is a cafe there. Good food and also Chopin, Georges Sand Museum. All coincidence, all happened, but there is a little story on Rue Chaptal. And Kenny Clark, I got to play with him in Europe, great drummer smooth, great time, great time feeling. So now we'll get back to Michel Legrand. What are you doing the rest of your life came after Umbrellas of Cherbourg? It was about 1969. Beautiful harmonic tune, melodic, and wonderful recording, Bill Evans playing Fender and real piano and Legrand conducting. What are you doing the rest of your life?
the beauty, the harmony, melody of uh, this song brings back the recent topic and it fits with any time in the history. But recently I was fortunate, I have to mention on August the 6th, I'm doing a live performance at a beautiful church in Mill Valley. When you go around the corner on Throckmorton, but there's a theater, you go keep going on Throckmorton and you run into Olive Street, you make a right, it's right there. And the great guitarist, uh, dynamic duo, my partner Kai Lyons and I are playing. We're going to do a lot of varied material. I'm fortunate that the Pacific Sun newspaper from San Rafael is doing a story on the concert, My History. And I just met a wonderful writer. Her name is Isabella Cook, but she's actually, I need to ask her how she got that name because her mother and grandmother, she comes from a Greek family. Uh, very enjoyable interview. And one of the questions was, what is the difference between jazz and rock and pop? <laughs> well, I said it before. Rock and pop, the way it is now, and we're not talking about earth, wind, and fire, and uh, James Brown, the soulful groups connected to gospel and blues and funk, the real. We're talking about crude, loud guitars who turn up the amps. There's no variation all the way through. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And simplistic melodies, rhythm, same, no, no variation. There's no... What, the art, jazz is a high music of art, variations, melodic, everything. So, to, that's the way it is. But what it is? Promotion. When Ken Burns, who does many historical topics, had a show on jazz, immediately sales jump. People go to the store because they influence what they are hearing. In the old days, how can you compare the big bands, Basie Ellington, Woody Herman, Stan Kenton, the sophisticated harmonies. You listen, you stand in front of the band in the blend of trumpet section, trombone, uh, saxophones, high level. You know, today there's no variation. So anyway, but what I'm trying to say, that was the music because it was so much heard on radio. So I would hope jazz would get some play again, you know. Oh boy. One sip and then we go to Bud Powell. And I'll tell you a story about Paris. But I should mention, this program is free. There's no charge. So tips, whatever you can give or is welcome. On the bottom of the screen, you have PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, whatever you can do, it's appreciated.
great Bud Powell bebop classic from 1947, originally recorded in the front line with Fats Navarro, great trumpet player. Fats was on the original recorded of Rue Chaptal, so, uh, Kenny Clark, a great melodic trumpet player, and Sonny, uh, Sonny Rollins, young Sonny, 21 year old playing great and the rhythm section besides Bud uh, you had Roy Haynes and Tommy Potter so but since then Bud recorded that tune in a trio version Barry Harris so what is interesting Bud played with a certain bebop rhythmic feel like a horn you know laying the notes down very loose and first time I heard Bud live was 1963 when my friend Carlos Burns from he went to Washington or went to Lincoln he doesn't play anymore he quit too bad but he used to have a good big band he brought it around high schools playing for dancers he had a jazz band so he and I go to Europe in 63 on the Dutch ship Rotterdam. And who is on the boat? Johnny Griffin, when he's moving to Europe. And the bebop scat singer Babs Gonzalez, who wrote some nice melodies, tunes himself. So we go to Paris, so the boat lands in La Havre, and we get a the paper was Herald Tribune, you know, for Americans, giving you the news in France and Paris. So we look, Blue Note, Double Bill, Bud Powell and Chet Baker. And then when we went there, we also heard at the Boulevard Saint-Germain, Kenny Clark was playing, Dexter sat in. So what was interesting, the first time we walk in a blue note, just as we walk in, Bud is playing Dance of the Infidels with his phrasing. Call it fate or coincidental, it was really something. And um, uh, I'll tell you more about jazz in France and at that time. And what happened was after a week in Paris, going back to the jazz clubs, people said, Copenhagen, that's the jazz scene, phenomenal jazz scene. So we went there next. Oh boy, a lot of, a lot of great memories. Next, we will go to the great Thelonious Monk tune, Round Midnight, which is also the name of a movie that featured Dexter Gordon. I'll tell you more about that when I play when I finish around midnight and there is a French film noir called Laison Dangerous, Dangerous Connection by director Roger Vadim and Jean Moreau, wonderful actress. And the French films used real bebop jazz musicians. Miles played in a French film, Elevator to the Gallows. He did a soundtrack, improvising. This one had the music of Thelonious Monk, Laison Dangerous, and Art Blakey was in some, that, that was the difference. Here, sometimes in a movie you had the big bands of well-known Louis Armstrong, and it was good, but the other cats were on a more improvisational level. So here is Round Midnight, a great classic, and I'll tell you more about the film later. Thank you. 
Now, something about the film. The I was living on the East Coast. I guess it was maybe, I guess, 87 or uh, late 80s it came out. The f French director Bernard Tavernier made a film I happened to watch today show that morning and he was raving about the film and kind of knocking this is not a Glenn Miller story, the commercial, you know, but it, it was an enjoyable film anyway, even though, but I can tell you this, the people who know, they could hear something was missing in Round Midnight. It was widely praised. Of course, Dexter Gordon played in a film a character, a combination of Lester Young and, and uh, Bud Powell. That was the role. He did a great job. Bobby Hutchison was there and Miles people were there. Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock. And what happened? I will tell you this, I was playing in Philly part of the time and a great drummer, Charlie Rice, that Miles mentions in his book. Charlie was a tailor during the day. He played in the early days a lot, but to support the family, he was an excellent tailor. Miles would mention him in his book. Charlie would make some suits, but Charlie didn't mince words. He and I went to see the film and we saw it, it was kind of lukewarm. What was missing? You have Lester Young, you have Bud Powell, you need to have that music. Who should have been the pianist? Barry Harris. Somehow he was aced out of the film for political reasons. What was sad, Herbie Hancock should have tried to play in that style. On purpose, he played in Miles Davis' modern style. No, not right. But most critics raved. You know, it takes a few critics here and there to speak the truth. Well, that's the way newspapers are. And what was missing was the sound of Bud Powell on a piano. And little read playing like Lester Young. So the movie had its points, but it lacked authenticity. So the French director raved and no, he wasn't right. That's the truth. And Charlie Rice played with Charlie Parker, Bud Powell, Hank Jones. He knew music. He recorded with Chet Baker, tour, toured with him. And he would see Miles sometimes and he told them, pardon my French, in, hey Miles, later Miles, why are you playing that shit? Oh, uh, well, you know, uh, people like it and it's money. Yeah, of course it's money, but the level of Miles' music from the 50s, that was on high level, was not there. So Charlie spoke the truth. Anyway, this is your little background. Now we'll go back to another original French song, Ceci Bon, written by a musician, André Betty. It was 1947. He was riding on a bus. He got the melody. Somehow he had manuscript paper and before he could lose the melody he wrote it down and completed it at home quickly. And what happened in the past I got some great melodies that I thought they were hits middle of the night. Oh I can wait when I get up in the morning I forgot it. But when Alexi and I were traveling to play at a festival in Norway 
after visiting friends in Copenhagen, we flew to Stockholm. I was falling asleep and a melody came. Luckily, I had my little recorder. I recorded it. And it became well put together, original of mine, Scandinavian waltz. So anyway, Ceci Bon, Henri Betty had manuscript paper. Ceci Bon is not considered a straight jazz tune, but it has a nice melody and some harmonies. And it was recorded, you probably, well, in America by Bing Crosby and Nat King Cole. In France, the actor Yves Montan, he had a very nice voice. And he recorded also. Uh, Sous les ciel du Paris under Paris sky. So uh, nice, nice tune, nice tune. Well, we are near the end of the program. I hope you enjoyed it. Merci beaucoup. And as I mentioned before, there is no charge for the program. Um, any tip or whatever, you can take a look on below the screen 
PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, it's appreciated. Uh, one thing I should mention, like we speak about French pronunciation, one thing I forgot, I mentioned the Roger Vadim film noir, Laison Dangerous, Dangerous Connections. I don't remember the name of this film. It was a French noir, an American, that had French actors speaking English. And to give it more authenticity, they spoke English but a heavy French accent. And one guy was chased by a policeman and he caught him and then he told him in English with a French accent, you dirty copain. Anyway, there are some, some memories from the films. Now, I mentioned that the great band leader, James Reese, Europe, brought syncopation with his orchestra to France. And Blue Notes also in America. He played a concert at the Carnegie Hall that had a great review by New York Times. Twelve years before Gershwin or Paul Whiteman with their orchestra were in big concert halls. And speaking of jazz and future histories, this is what he said. We colored people have our own music that is part of us. It's the product of our souls. It's been created by the suffering and miseries of our race. Well, later, jazz became recognized as the original black music. And the masters, of course, the top ones were black. R. Tatum, Charlie Parker, we can go on. However, as the music, like any music, became an art form, you have people all over the world that can tune in. You can have a gentleman from the Orient playing Chopin, playing bebop, if you tune in and speak the language. And there were, however, many great white musicians like Chet Baker who contributed sound of his own, even though he was influenced by Miles, but he brought the melodic content. Bill Evans, influenced by, he loved Charlie Parker, Hampton Hawes, however, he brought his own harmonies and Kind of Blue is mainly a Bill Evans creation. He didn't get the credit, but people have written about it. So you have musicians from all over the world making this music as a whole. One of the French groups that I mentioned in the email is Double Six of Paris, headed by wonderful vocalist Mimi Perron. They had six voices singing in modern harmonies, doing all the classic bebop, ow, grooving high, it's all the great classics. So, and Dizzy was on this CD with them, Bud Powell, Pierre Michelot, and Kenny Clark. They did, they recorded grooving high. So I'm going to close with Dizzy's grooving high.
Monsieur, Madame, Monsieur, s'il vous plaît, hope you enjoy the program du jazz France. And as I mentioned in the past, my son Alexi, who is overseas, was doing a lot of streaming, but this is late for him. This actually, right now, would be 11.15 in Europe. He gets up early to teach and do some technical work. And so, our good friend and a highly tech person, Mexican-American cat, Jose Nuno, has been doing the job. But, job. but today, he's not Jose Nuno. He's Jose Nuno. So thank you, Jose Nuno, for the streaming. Thank you, Sana, for all the help you gave us, prepare this. And merci beaucoup. Hope to see you. Check my email and hope to see you at the Community Church of Mill Valley Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m., 4 to 6 in Mill Valley. Thank you. Bonsoir. Merci.